The Tesla Cybertruck has a battery capacity of 120 kilowatt hours and is reported to have a range of 300 plus miles. For comparison, my first EV, the Honda Fit, had a 20 kilowatt hour battery and could go about 65 miles. And you know what has a zero mile range but needs about 30 kilowatt hours daily? Your house. What if your EV could repurpose its battery to power your home? Hi, I'm Sinue. Typically, I'd say this video is brought to you by DroneQuote, but forget that. Today's sponsor is Uncle Sam. It turns out he gave me the cheat code to life and he can give you one too. I got free travel, paid for college, and a VA house loan with just about pocket change for a down payment. I even got cush jobs thanks to my veteran status. So if you're looking for life hacks, check out the military. Booyakasha! Now, let's get back to it. Here's an experiment you could do at home. Ask a young child to draw you a truck. Chances are, it may resemble a cyber truck. Sure, there was the infamous windshield breaking moment during the reveal and delays in getting to market, but good things come to those who wait, right? Despite its hefty weight at around 6,500 pounds, the Cybertruck offers surprising combination of muscle and maneuverability. While its top speed of 110 plus miles per hour might not be record breaking, its zero to 60 miles per hour speed puts some expensive sports cars to shame. The looks are love it or hate it, but the addition of bi-directional charging is a big deal. Yup, the Cybertruck turns into a mobile power source. Think of it as a home battery on wheels with what Tesla calls power share. You can even charge another EV with a Cybertruck as Tesla demonstrates by charging this Model Y. But that's a bit gimmicky if you ask me, plus my fuel siphoning days are behind me. So the Cybertruck isn't just a truck, it's a multifunctional powerhouse for driving and backup power. And that's awesome. But what exactly is the concept of bi-directional charging? Imagine cruising in your sleek electric car, saving money on gas, and actively participating in the energy grid for financial gain rather than financial pain. Bidirectional charging, a new technology, unlocks this potential. PowerShare, as Tesla calls it, makes it so EVs can pump power back into your home keeping the lights on and the beer cold during outages. Say goodbye to dusty generators and hello to reliable backup. Bidirectional charging can even help manage energy use, which could lower electricity bills. For example, during peak hours when rates cost a king's ransom, you plug your car into your crib and run the house on the car battery, thereby avoiding the expensive rates from the utility. And even a tiny battery like my old 20 kilowatt hour Honda Fit would power home's demands during a four hour price period known as time of use. Frankly, the amount of coverage afforded by a bi-directional EV battery is actually a great value on a per kilowatt hour basis. But just because a car is all electric doesn't mean it has bi-directional charging capacities. When I had my little Honda Fit EV, it always bothered me that I couldn't plug my house into its battery. Clearly, Tesla is the most popular EV brand in the world, but it only offers bi-directional charging with the Cybertruck, I think perhaps because it would cannibalize their Powerwall sales. As a matter of fact, their PowerShare feature is only available for Cybertruck owners who also install a Powerwall, which is redundant since the benefit of a bi-directional charging system is to avoid the additional cost of installing a home battery. I guess PowerShare is called that because you got to share so much of your money with Tesla. Anyway, here are some options that I think are better suited for those who are not interested in buying a Cybertruck, but are intrigued by the potential for bi-directional charging. First, there's a Hyundai Ioniq 5. While it doesn't have full vehicle-to-home or vehicle-to-grid capacities, it can serve as a power station with up to 3.6 kilowatts of power output and a 74 kilowatt hour battery. Word on the internet is that the hardware exists in the vehicle to offer vehicle to grid, but I was not able to nail that down in my research. So next are the Kia EV6 and EV9. 
both of which offer 3.6 kilowatts of capacity and batteries ranging from 75 to 95 kilowatt hours. However, only the EV9 GT is confirmed to carry the necessary hardware to connect the vehicle to the grid. Then there's the trusty Nissan LEAF, which features bi-directional charging via vehicle to home and vehicle to grid and can output up to 7 kilowatts higher than most other EVs on the market, albeit with a smaller 60 kilowatt hour battery. There are additional cars on the market that offer this feature, but rather than bore you with all the details, let me share one of the vehicles that I find most impressive with outstanding bi-directional charging features. If you have this model, please comment below. I would really love to hear your experience and opinion of it. The Ford F-150 Lightning. It has battery options ranging from 100 to 130 kilowatt hours, plus it offers 9.6 kilowatts of supply power, or enough to run your whole house and turn the AC on at the same time. EVs with bi-directional charging are a powerful and electrifying option. But how do they compare to a dedicated home battery? Maybe Tesla isn't trying to take you for every penny they can, but instead a power wall installation plus a Cybertruck is the ticket. Let's unpack key differences between plugging into your car's battery or having a dedicated home battery. Plus, I'll also share some important considerations if you find yourself deciding between the two. A dedicated home battery is your go-to source for juice in the event of power outages or to offset demand or time of use charges. What's nice about installing a home battery is your wife cannot take it on a run for errands, leaving you in the dark if there's an outage while she's gone. However, a typical home battery ranges from 10 to 13 kilowatt hours in capacity, meaning you would be well served to have solar installed with it. And even on a bright sunny day, you wanna use the battery carefully so as to not deplete it. Whereas EV batteries nowadays start at around 60 kilowatt hours, so more than four times that of a home battery. And unlike the home battery, you can get into your EV and not go through the McDonald's drive-through because it's mad expensive. But if you're only looking for backup capacity or energy storage, which are not one and the same, mind you, you can watch that video here for more information, then a home battery may be easier on the wallet for you. For reference, a Powerwall 3 will set you back about $14,000 after installation costs. Meanwhile, a used Ford F-150 Lightning goes for about 50K on CarMax. However, it's possible an EV may save enough money on gas to help bridge the gap in cost between an EV with bi-directional capacities and a home energy battery. You can use the free drone quote EV calculator to estimate fuel savings if you switch to an EV. Double savings if you live in a place with high electricity rates and can run your entire house off the EV's battery during peak hours. As a side note, and not to detract from the value proposition of vehicle to grid, all of these vehicles would need additional hardware installed to utilize true bi-directional features like vehicle to home or vehicle to grid. Off the lot, you can plug into most electric vehicles, but that's not the same as plugging your house into the electric vehicle. For reference, the F-150 Lightning requires a specific charger that costs $1,300 plus installation. At least no other electric vehicles besides the Cybertruck require you to install a home battery, so there's that. What do you think about the concept of bi-directional charging? Does it help sway you to consider an EV? I've had two power outages very recently, one lasting two hours. Fortunately, I had my EcoFlow battery on standby and was able to plug into it and continue working. But if it had gone on longer, I'd probably be singing a different tune wishing it had more battery capacity. I also filled up my gas tank today and gas prices only seem to climb. Oh my goodness, making me wish I drove an EV rather than my badass Honda Odyssey. I just don't know if I'd feel as manly in an EV as I do in my minivan. 